two weeks before the the day of AI, um, sponges must be introduced. So the sponge contains progesterone, um, and what that does is it will synchronize the heat of the O. So once those sponges are removed, we need to remove them two days before AI. So once they're once they're pulled or removed, um, the O then starts to starts to come into heat. Um, Brian will also be administering PMSG, so that's simply a hormone to um, to ensure that the O's will will have a decent crop of animals. And so then it's it's the O's ready ready to be AI'd on on day 14. So the whole process starts on day one with sponging, day 12 with sponge removal, and day 14 with with the actual AI itself. This is an artificial vagina. It's basically made up of a latex liner, and it's filled with warm water and air. And the idea is when the ram goes up to serve the O, instead of inserting the O's vagina, he'll insert into this artificial vagina and the semen will be collected uh, in this plastic sheath here and down to the tube. It's kind of very obedient, I hope. So the semen is run down the sides there. It's a good collection. So take one little dot of semen. Place on the slide. Take it under the microscope. Really good semen, it's top quality semen. It's about one mil, so it's, as you can see, the deep colour, deep milky colour, it's quite concentrated. It's five out of five, so I can dilute that at least one to ten, so I can dilute it down to ten mil. And that ram will easily cover about 50 euros, 50, 60 euros. This is freshly made diluent that was made up this morning. Uh, it's set at 35 degrees Celsius at that body temperature. So all we do is we make sure that the pet is clean before we add anything in. It's roughly 1 to 10 at that now. What I do at this stage now is I'll check it again. See what it looks like under the microscope. I'm very happy with that, that's, that's really good. It's diluted down and still really good quality semen. You could actually dilute it probably up to 15 mil. It's still quite strong, so that, that round would easily do um, 70, 80 euros. Right, so the O here is just, um, clipped and surgically prepared. Um, we make a small incision on the left and a small incision on the right. Uh, we use a, a 10 millimeter um, throw car. That's what we use to make the incision on the left hand side. That's the side that the scope will go through. We run on this side, pull the skin, insert roughly so a couple of centimeters in front of the other. And we make it, and the goat's blunt. It goes in quite, quite easily. There's a sharp point on it so it penetrates the skin and the muscle very, very easily and very little bleeding. We use a 5mm on the right, that's the side that the AI gun will go through. And again it's blunt, blunt incision and there's no bleeding. And the left hand side is the side that the scope goes in, so the scope is connected to a light source. So effectively it's a mini camera. So going to the left hand side. That's the side we use, that's what we use to visualize the, the wound inside. So, um, and the right hand side obviously then is for, for the AI gun. So the scope, get in here now. We use some gas, you see the pedal here, up my foot. The pedal here, that's, we use some gas to displace um, the stomach and intestines and the bladder of the waist to, to create a bit more space and a bit more room inside. So we can actually visualize what we want to see, which is the wound. The eye gun then goes in on the right hand side. I'm using the probe on the tip of the eye gun to move the bladder to one side. And the uterine horns then are moving into position. So we generally inject the semen, there's, there's two uterine horns, so we inject semen into the left and the right side. So I'm now 
injecting him to the left side. At about point one mil of semen. We've gone in there now. We're moving out of that now. We're moving on to the right hand side. And again, the needle has gone in there now. That point one mil of semen. Gone into the right hand side. As you can see, that's the tip of the needle. Short needle about five millimeters. And that's it. Very small little um, area there. You can see where the where it's gone through, and that'll heal up itself. There's no need for a stitch or anything. Just a bit of blue spray, a bit of alumycin spray, antibiotic spray, and she'll get a long-acting antibiotic as well. And that's it. Working with uh, farmers like Brian through the Sheep Ireland CPT um, gives us a great chance to collect commercial data on on the pedigree rams being used uh, across Ireland. Um, so here today we will be uh, using six different rams, um, mainly Belfair, but we'll also be using Texel and Suffolk. So to get these rams into, into flocks like Brian, um, our, our aim is to, to mate the rams with 100 joes across the CPT program. So that volume of commercial data really uh, really helps us to increase the accuracies in those rams and hopefully to prove um, to, to, to further prove their genetic evaluations. These are all high index rams that we use in the CPT, so they're high on the replacement index, and that's our main focus. So our hope is that by proving the rams and increasing the accuracies here in the CPT, that we can then go further uh, down the line to promoting the use of those rams um, to pedigree breeders themselves to try and spread the genetics to, to other commercial farmers in Ireland. I got involved with the CPT uh, last year, um, part of my reasoning behind um, joining up. I can have um, a more condensed lambing with, with yaws lambing down over a short period. Uh, as a result then I can get uh, focus my labour on that, that time of the year. Uh, another reason for, for joining up was to um, hopefully try and increase the genetic merit of, of my own yaws that, that I'm keeping here in the farm for breeding. Um, the, the CPT program uses the top five star rams from each breed so uh, hopefully I can increase on, on my own star ratings within my, my um, mature yaw flock uh, by partaking in, in the program.